Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name. the song speaks this morning maybe God blessed us and he's taken it away and still the songwriter says Lord still my heart will choose to praise you hallelujah all those who've gone through losses in our lives all those who lost something precious it could be a relationship it could be money it could be wealth it could be something that was very dear unto you but we're going to join with the singer and we're going to join and praise him and tell him, Lord, you will give and you will take it away. But still my heart chooses to say this morning, declare it in your holy presence, God. <laughs> 
that I still choose to bless your holy name. Hallelujah. When we release all the bitterness, when we release the anguish and the grief that is taken over us, that is the time God meets us at the point of need. Hallelujah. I'm just going to pray for all of you. I'm going to pray for all your tomorrows. Hallelujah. And God is asking us to take and live one day at a time. Give us today our daily bread, says the word of God. It does not say give us today our monthly bread, our yearly bread. No, it says give us this day what we need for this day. Hallelujah. For tomorrow has its own cares. Tomorrow has its own problems. Tomorrow has its own fears and tears. Hallelujah. But here is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Even as we sincerely stand in his, praise, in his presence and thank him and praise him. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit chases away all our fears and wipes away all our tears this morning. I just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I just feel him comforting each and every one of us. Strengthening us and counseling us. Hallelujah. And God's word tells us. That he will place his eye upon us and counsel us, says the word of God. Hallelujah. Shall we ask him, Lord, place your eye upon us, Master. And you are watchful over people who are being neglected, who are going through rejection in their lives. And God saw Leah that she was hated. And God opened her womb, says the word of God. Even yesterday, I was just reading that promise. God saw that she was hated by her very husband, Jacob. And so God chose to bless her. Maybe she was not Jacob's choice, but she was the choice of God. Hallelujah. And God, the son of God, chose to come through the lineage of Leah. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody else did not choose you. But here, God is here to choose you this morning. Hallelujah. Leah would have thought, I'm nobody's choice. And nobody wants me. Nobody likes me. But God told her, you are very precious in my eyes. And I have chosen you over Rachel. I have chosen you over the beautiful woman. I have chosen you over the worldly people or the talent or the blessings that you think are present in their lives. And God is looking into our lives this morning. We're just going to sing this song one more time. And we're going to get into the Bible reading. But now I want all of you to join with me and bless his holy name. He deserves it. Shall we bless his name even as we sing the same song again?
as we are getting ready to receive the word of God this morning, we're going to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I request Sister Shino to come here without wasting time. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we read from verses 9 to 15. So if you have your Bibles, join us in the reading. Praise God. Uh, I'm going to read from the chapter 2 Chronicles 20 verses 9 to 15. If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in, in this house, and cry unto thee our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they rewarded us to, to come to cast out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jeziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah, a Levite, the son of uh, Asa came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation, and he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhibitions of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you. Unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this multitude. Yes. For the battle is not yours but God's. Hallelujah. The battle is not ours, but the battle belongs to the Lord. Even before we sing that Bible song, we're going to ask God to fight our battles, especially against this coronavirus. We cancel the power of this virus. We cancel the power of the killer disease. And we speak the redemption and healing of the Lord. I request Sister Mini to come and lead us in prayer. together here in your house, oh Lord. Lord, even when many other places are denied of entry, oh Master, thank you, Lord, for your house is open for us to come and worship, oh Lord. Lord, even we pray, oh Master, Lord, you will bring an end to this virus, oh Master. Lord, your word says pray without ceasing, oh Master. Lord, we will continue to pray until you bring forth a miracle, oh Master. Lord, you... <laughs> Lord, your word says, Lord, the prayer of a righteous man is effective, your, your word says, O Master. Lord, we are made righteous through you, O Master. Lord, we believe that you will hear our prayers and answer it with a yes and an amen, O Master. Lord, even now we pray for the families who have been affected with this virus, O Master. Lord, we pray for the families who have gone, who have lost their loved ones, O Master. Lord, we pray for the people who have lost their jobs, O Master. Lord, we pray for the people who are struggling with their businesses, O oh Master. Lord, we pray for the people who are, Lord, finding it difficult to meet their needs, O oh Master. Lord, you are the source of all supply, O oh Master. Lord, you are our deliverer, O oh Master. Lord, there is nothing too hard for you, O oh Master. Lord, your hand is not so short to save us, O oh Master. Lord, we pray, O oh Master. Lord, we plead for your mercy, O oh Master. Lord, hear our prayers, O oh Master. Lord, listen to our cry. O oh Master, Lord, your word says that you are rich in mercy, O oh Master. Lord, we pray that you will forgive our sins, O oh Master. Lord, heal our land, O oh Master. Heal our nation, O oh Master. Lord, you are a merciful God who brings forth rain on the wicked and the good, says your word, O oh Master. Lord, we pray for the people who are inside this church, who are outside. We pray for the whole nation, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray that you will bring an end to this virus, O oh Master. Lord, we pray for your mercy. We pray for your grace, O oh Master master lord help us to come and testify here in your place again oh master lord that you have brought an end oh master lord help us to step into this place without a mask and a sanitizer oh master lord bring everything back to normal oh master lord even in our losses even in our grief oh master we give you praise because you have sustained us if you have sustained us lord you have a purpose for us oh master and it is a purpose oh master and it is a vision to pray for all of 
uh, for all of them and for the nation our oh master thank you for giving us this bird and our oh master lord we pray and we believe that you will answer this prayer with a yes and a amen lord thank you so much for this day lord even as we're getting prepared to hear the word of god our oh master lord help us to hear the word what yes, you lord. want to speak to us our oh master let it be a blessing our oh master lord let it teach us what we should be doing in the coming week our oh master we give everything in your hands in jesus name we pray amen amen hallelujah so we will continue to pray and he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world says the word of god whether it is he she or the virus god is much much more greater than the power of the virus so god is fighting our battles his sword is against pestilence against famine against pandemic epidemic so if you choose to believe in his promise shall we just lift up the bibles high in our hands and sing that beautiful song the b r b l e the b r b l e Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone in the word of God, the B I B L E. Come on, everybody. B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. We stand alone in the word of God, the B I B L E. Oh, say for joy to God our strength. Oh, say for joy to God our strength. Hallelujah. Please be seated and we are ready to receive God's word this morning. I'm going to read to you something from the very something from a very familiar passage. The passage is what happened before David defeated Goliath and it's found in the book of 1 Samuel. 17th chapter the 17th and the 18th verse it says like this then Jesse said to his son David take now for your brothers an ephah of this dried grain and these 10 loaves and run to your brothers at the camp and carry these 10 cheese to the captain of their thousand and see how your brothers fare and bring back news of them here's a commission here's a task here's something that the father wants and in return the father is expecting something this is what i want to remind you even as we've come here with a very pleasant weather a weather that we've always wanted maybe we wanted it it's arrived late but still we are enjoying the weather but despite all these challenges 
we've come here so that we would listen as uh, mini prayed we've come here to listen to the word so that we would go in the strength of the lord of all the challenges that we are facing the troubles that are brewing or the unrest that's in our home maybe finances are going dry maybe health is a real a real challenge despite all of this we've come to hear the word of god and let's ask god to speak to us let's pray god we thank you for this morning we thank you for the pleasant weather that all of us have um, been witnessing lord we thank you for you've given us life maybe we've got up in our homes we walked into the church there are many people who would have got up in their homes but they would be visiting some diagnostic center to test for covid or maybe few would be getting into a hospital for admission or few might even get into the grave today but despite all of this lord we thank you for you given us strength and you have allowed us to step into the church lord we pray that you'd speak to us in jesus name we pray amen now there's a task and the father is asking david to do certain things and as the father is asking him to do at the end of it he wants david to do something he says and bring back news of them now here david is asked i mean david is told by his father now i want you to take all these things carry everything like a swiggy boy now david is carrying everything or like a courier boy david is carrying everything and after the courier is delivered or after the amazon guy he hands over something into your hand he asks you to sign or he asks for your name and he says he notes it down so that he will punch it in his machine and this will be uploaded in the system and the system will give a feedback or write into your app even before you get into your home there be something that will pop up in your app saying that manoj has received a jeshuran has received or somebody your name has received the parcel this will be going back to them now somebody who's brought a parcel somebody who's given a task and the boss is expecting if you want to be rewarded if you want to be blessed if you want to take home a salary and an incentive i'm just not going to throw it away i want you to give me a feedback i want you to give me a report i want you to give me the end result and based on the end result i'm going to give you you the reward similarly david's father could have said just go give it and come but he says i have a disclaimer for you i have an asterisk mark at the end of the command that i'm giving you and what is that asterisk mark he says i want you to bring back a report about your brothers and how they are faring my dear brother my dear sister maybe even as you're seated and you're ready to get back into the into work or maybe you get back ready to get back into whatever you plan for this day or this day or this week god is reminding you and god is reminding me he says i I want you to come back with the news i want you to come back with the report what is the report i'm going to remind you of three reports from the bible and this is what when you when you are ready when you are preparing yourself to run through this whole week that is ahead of you for few of you all it could be a very special week for few of you all it could be yet another monday week for few of you all it could be a week where you are expecting some news something should happen and i expect god to really do a miracle in the prayer that i've asked god to bless maybe you've come here with an expectant heart and i'm going to remind you of three things that what god is going to ask us or god is going to remind us even as we are ready to get back the bible tells us there's one lady now she was very blessed she was somebody who, who served the prophet she says i have everything in the beginning but the prophet says you have everything but you don't have a child next year by the time i come here you'll be blessed to the boy baby so this boy who's raised in her house is not just a son of pride but this is a son from god the man of god blesses her and she's less to the boy baby he should be around 9 or 10 or maybe even 11 years old because he goes with his father to the farm and now he's able to tell his father clearly what is happening to him he says daddy i have a migraine daddy my head is aching and this headache is really growing from bad to worse so then a father is asking somebody a helper as he says now take this boy to the mother this boy comes to the mother he's lying down on the lap of the mother and this boy dies the bible tells us the mother does not panic the mother keeps the lays the boy in the bed and she calls a servant and she says there's a problem there's a situation in our home there's something that i never expected to happen there's something that's going to really bring grief that's really really going to bring a lot of disgrace to this house everybody who saw me blessed they will be saying they are happy because the blessing that i had is now lost is no more in my hand all those people who claim that they were well wishers 
us all those people who are smiling at me all those people who came and congratulated me all those people who are faking before me all these people will have a party in their house because they have seen a blessing in my life and now this blessing is dead and gone the boy is dead the boy is lifeless even the husband does not know the lady in the house she calls a servant and she says to the servant if i need a miracle i need a miracle and if i the easiest way or the best way to get the miracle is i'm going to give you a commandment this is what she says then she saddled a donkey and she said to her servant drive and go forward do not slacken the pace for me unless i tell you the first thing that the lady says is even as david's father said go but come back with the news the lady says go and if you have to come back with a glad news if you have to come back with something that i'm expecting if you have to come back with something that is dead that's no more in my hand and i don't know what's going to happen next i want you to follow this principle and she says do not slacken the pace for me unless i tell you she says now you started something now all the situation around you will be telling you what is the use of worshiping god what is the use of giving an offering to god what is the use of getting up early morning brushing your teeth taking bath and rushing into the church what is the use why don't you stay back at home why don't you enjoy the weather what's the use traveling all these kilometers going to a church god is everywhere maybe god is there there right next to you in your home god is there even right next to you on your pillow god is everywhere maybe something is telling you everything is depressing now nothing is going to work out you don't have a proper job you don't have a proper salary you don't have a proper ministry you don't have peace in your house there's a lot of fight in the house there's commotion children are not obeying parents are not loving so many things can be depressing us that the lady tells us now this lady is instructing the servant will be thinking i am the one who brought the boy the boy came with a complaint he was sick already it is not that he died he collapsed all of a sudden the boy was sick sir i know that this boy was suffering with the sickness for 2 to 3 hours and i brought this boy and i see this boy swooning this boy is dead and this lady is telling me i want you to run this race now don't slow your pace if you need a miracle if you need something to be revived in your life if you want something to come back to life and you want to smile and tell the world that you're not somebody who's defeated you're somebody who's victory victorious despite all the challenges she tells him i want you to obey this do not slow the pace my dear brother my dear sister the first thing is i want to remind you god is wanting us maybe we started something maybe initially there was a lot of joy there was a lot of happiness we were so happy about the decision that we made it could be the house that we moved it could be the pet that we bought it could be the car that you're using it could be the new gadget that you're using it could be anything new that you have and initially there's a lot of joy and now if you ask yourself if i ask you personally maybe you'll say it's okay i'm okay i'm not bad but i'm not really great that could be around answer but i want to tell you this is what the lady told the servant don't slow your pace if you slow your pace the result is not going to come if you slow your pace what is dead what is now absolutely depressing is not going to come back alive you will not see good days at all you will not see nicer days it's going to be bad it's going to be worse it's going to be terrible you're going to move from the frying pan into the fire but if you want to move towards a greater pace towards a greater height she says don't do this don't slow in your pace the bible tells us in the book of genesis chapter 19 verse 17 there was an angel who grabbed lot and his wife and his children and he says now come let us go and he points out to a mountain and he says run to the mountain and all of you will be saved now look at this an angel god sends angels and these angels say come i'm going to guide you come i'm going to help you i'm going to really take care of your journey and this angel says come let's go now this man by name lot he looks at the angel and he asks this excuse he says so it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said escape from your life escape for your life do not look behind uh, nor stay anywhere in the plain escape to the mountains lest you be destroyed you know what the bible says in the book of genesis chapter 19 verse 18 it says now they, lot looks at the angel and he says i don't think i can run i don't think i have the energy in me i'm already drained i don't know what's happening there's so much of confusion last night so many people came against our house last night there was confusion commotion in our house people who my my friends they've turned as foes everybody whom i thought they're all going to stay with me they will be my helpers they will be my pals and these people don't want peace in my house these people are against me maybe lot is a confused man he does not know now my daughters were ready to get married 
married. I was thinking another few more weeks, few more months, my daughters will get married. I was thinking everything is going to settle down. I'm going to be a happy father and then a happy grandfather. But look at this. Everything is running haywire. And he's looking at the angel. He says, I don't have, I neither do I have strength in my body, nor do I have strength in my mind. I'm physically drained, emotionally drained, distressed every side. I don't think I can do it. He asked this man, sir, can I please be excused? Can you give me some concession? Yes, God wants me to run without looking back. Yes, God wants me to maintain a pace. Yes, God wants me to go on to that hill. But I don't think I can have it. My dear brother, my dear sister, maybe when you tell God, I'm really depressed. I don't want to go to church today. I don't feel like worshipping God. I don't feel like getting up this morning. I don't feel like answering this call. I don't feel like replying to this person, this this text maybe something is troubling your mind i'm not going to ask you now get back and do it but i'm just going to tell you this is what the lady told this man go do not do not slacken but here the bible tells us lot he asked excuse he said i cannot maintain this pace if i run on top of the mountain it's going to be disturbing it's going to be troublesome and he asked for an excuse at the end of it he lost his wife at the end of it he, he was a curse. He was planning for his daughter's wedding. He was thinking everything will be fine. But at the end of it, this man became a curse. This man's choice became a curse. This man's daughters became a curse. This man's grandchildren and all the clan behind them. Everybody was a clerk. Everybody, everyone were a, clerk, a curse. And the Bible tells us, Jesus says, if God says, anybody and everybody can enter heaven, but only these two people, Lot's grandchildren and people from them, God says these two people and their children their grandchildren they cannot come to heaven so if you're going to slow down this week maybe something is troubling you maybe you don't have it in you and you would be telling me it's very difficult to again smile at those people it is very difficult to forgive and accept those people it is very difficult for me to be nice to those people it is going to be very difficult but I that's the choice is yours the lady says don't slow. You should not loosen your pace. You should not lower your pace. Just maintain, run fast and keep going till you see a miracle. That man maintained his pace. At the end of it, the boy who was dead, he was dead for many hours. This boy came back to life. First thing I want to remind you, if you are going to come back to the pace that God wants you to run, maybe yes, you're very angry, you're very hurt, you're troubled, you're not able to really be normal. You say that you've forgiven, but you've not forgotten that incident. Maybe when suddenly Satan reminds you and Satan wants to tell you, oh, why are you nice to those people? Those people are the meanest people on this world. They can be cruel to the core. Maybe that's what Satan tells you. Don't slow in your pace. It's a very, very short life that God has given us. Today we are alive. Tomorrow we don't know what it is. Today we might think we are happy, we are healthy. Tomorrow we don't know what it is. Last Friday or Saturday I had a prayer request from Ajay. He said, my uncle who's in his 40s, he has two children. He's the one who's very close to our family. He's the man whom we can lean on for anything. And suddenly he contracted some chest pain. He's gone to the hospital. He went into the hospital. He never came out of the hospital. They gave the best of the medical care. They said, yes, we are trying. We are giving him all that it is. But he did not come back. Tomorrow is the prayer meeting. Tomorrow we are going to go there to bless the family. I don't know what to speak about the man who's dead and gone. But even as I was seated over here, I was asking, tomorrow I'm going to, I have to go there. I have to stand with a family who's lost a father. There's going to be young children who are in their schools. Maybe now they're not going to school. Now they're not in the uniform. I'm going to speak to a young widow. I'm going to speak to two children. Everybody else will come. Maybe they'll have biryani or they'll have the food prepared and they will walk away. But what am I going to speak to those two children? What am I going to speak to the wife? I was seated over here and I was asking God, I want you to strengthen the family. And the Lord reminded me of something which I'm going to go to speak tomorrow. My dear brother, my dear sister, like Life is very short. It's too late for you to be angry with somebody, to be depressed, to be really irritated, to be frustrated. God is telling us. We don't know when our home calling is going to be. God is telling us if the lady could tell her servant, if you slow in your pace, you will not receive your blessing. If you're going to give excuses, I cannot go to church today. I think it's raining. I think it's really cloudy. God has given you a car. God has given you a bike. Or God has given you an app which can bring a car right to your doorstep. You don't have to pay the driver. You don't have to clean the car. You don't have to refill the car with gas or petrol or diesel. Everything God has blessed you. Despite all of this, 
If you are going to give excuses like, Lord, I think I cannot go to a church today. I think I cannot be nice to those people. I think I'm not in a mood to talk to them. Please give me some space. I want to be alone. There are many people who run into their homes, run into their rooms, lock themselves. Maybe if you're somebody like that, I don't know why, I don't know whom God is talking to. If you are someone who says, if your mother, father, daughter, son, brother, sister, somebody irritates you, and if you're going to run away from those people, run into that room and close yourself. God is reminding you, God is reminding me. Lot did not want to be in the place that God wanted. He was in places where it was a curse, it was a disaster, it was disturbing. If you are wanting to be alone, maybe God will allow the virus to enter into your home. And you will be alone for 14 days or 21 days or maybe we may not even come back to our homes. If you are somebody who does not want to listen to God, who wants to slow your pace from what God has planned. The next thing that I want to remind you is, the Bible tells us, in the book of Acts chapter 8, 26 and 27, and the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip saying, Arise and go toward, towards the south, onto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is a desert. And he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candence, a queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for, for to worship. The Bible tells us, now here is a man by name Philip. Philip has four young unmarried daughters. We don't know about his wife. God does not talk to us. God does not give us his wife's name. God does not give us all these four daughters' name. Look at it. Now the father will be say, I have teenage daughters. I cannot just leave the daughters and go. Yes, Lord, I'm in ministry. But I can do ministry from my home. I cannot step out. What if I leave my daughters? What if somebody comes into my home? What if somebody allures my daughters and take them away? He could be somebody who could have given excuse. But but the Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 18 verse 8 verse 26 angel of the Lord was sent God could have said he's a family man he has four young daughters and all these daughters are prophets so everybody who wants some word let them all go to Philip's house Philip you take care of the men's ministry young girls you can take care of all the youth ministry you can have a church in your home it could have been the commission but the Bible tells when God comes and tells this man Philip the Bible tells us next verse this man steps out and goes. And when he goes, he sees an Ethiopian eunuch. He's going in a chariot. Today, even if you have a car or a bike, it's all converted into so many brake horsepower. It's says horsepower, horsepower. It is equivalent. Your car's speed or the engine's capacity is converted into a horse's power. So now this man is already a father to four young teenage or maybe young adult girls. And this man could have said, God, what is this? That man has a chariot. He has somebody walking before him or there's another chariot which is a guard because he was like a finance minister. There could be people who are guarding him on the front, people who are guarding him on the back. This man could have said, God, I think you chose the wrong person. I'm not Hussein Bolt. I cannot run. I cannot match the chariot. I cannot match the horse. Lord, look at it. That man is seated at this height. If I go, I, he will be looking down on me. I don't have a proper clothes. I don't have a running shoe. I don't have anybody. I don't even have a donkey to carry me. He could have given all the excuses. But my Bible tells me that the moment God says he goes into the desert and he sees the Ethiopian eunuch who's a minister and this man is reading a Bible my Bible tells me that this man obeyed God's word he ran to the chariot and he started speaking to that man so the first thing that you and I need to do is God is telling us don't slow your pace next thing this week God will speak to you God will ask you to do something God will ask you to do something for God's sake do something in the sense go to Prince Jewelry and buy one sovereign of gold this is what many people say or go to there is a sale in lifestyle you can buy a new shirt you can buy a new dress you can can buy something it's 50 60 percent off maybe that is what you would want to do but here God is talking to us do something for God you and I are required to do something for God the Bible tells us that this man steps out and he speaks to that Ethiopian minister and at the end of it that Ethiopian minister was baptized he said now give me baptism it was just a casual walk as they were walking, this man was teaching this man what is God's love for him, what is God's plan for him. And the Bible tells us that this man immediately stopped the horse, stopped the chariot. He took baptism in the desert. My dear brother, my dear sister, Acts chapter 21 verse 9 says, Now this man had four virgin daughters 
who prophesied. When you and I step out for God, when you and I stand for God, when you and I hold on to God's word and be a blessing to somebody around us, God is a God who will never go without rewarding us. I was curious. I wanted to know, what is the name of these daughters? These four daughters were prophets. They were prophesying. I wanted to know, what, are this, what is the name? I got on Wikipedia. I wanted to check. God, I want to know. The Bible does not tell me. Is there any historic book that gives me names of these four daughters? It says, Wikipedia gave me an answer saying that none of these four daughters Gave, were given a name in the Bible or his wife's name is not present in the Bible you know what, when Philip died two of his daughters died along with him I believe, I don't know what maybe grief, maybe shock, maybe they couldn't take the father being taken away these two daughters died and the Wikipedia returned an answer saying that along with Philip, both his daughters were buried and then later other two daughters were also buried in the same graveyard look at the blessed life a man who walked with God, he had daughters who loved him. A man who walked with God, who obeyed God's voice, he had daughters or he had children who loved him more than anything, more than his, their neighbors, more than their auntie's son or uncle's son or maybe around them, all the young boys over there. These young girls loved God. They prophesied. They loved their father. And the third thing that I want to remind you and close is, it's found in the book of Second Samuel 18th chapter in the 22nd verse, Ahimas, Ahimas, son of Zadok, again said to Joab, Come, what may, please let me run behind the Cushite. But Joab replied, My son, why do you want to go? You don't have any news that will bring you reward. The third thing that I want to tell you is, yes, we all want to get into this week. Next Sunday when you come back here, will you have a testimony? Will you have something to share? Now Joab is looking at a small boy. His name is Ahimas. He's looking at Ahimas. Ahimas wants to do. He's telling, sir, sir, can I also go? Sir, can I also do this? Sir, can I also do this? Get into this. He's so desperate. He wants to do something. And Joab looks at this boy. What is this? You don't have anything. You don't have any good news. You are a nice boy. Like so many of us. You're a good father. Morning you wake up. Make coffee. Like your husband and wife make coffee. Wake your children. Give them coffee. At 9 o'clock give them breakfast. In their bed place their laptop. You are good parents who give them non-vegetarian lunch or you're a good spouse who gets everything that is needed for the husband. You're a great husband who wants to provide the best for your wife, who wants to be a wall around your wife. You are wonderful people. You're a great people. But next Sunday when you come, will you have a good news? Will you have something that's going to glorify God? If you don't have, I want you to listen to this. The Bible tells us, Job is telling him, you don't have a good news. What is the point in going and standing before the king? Now Job, now Ahima says, no, 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 sir, I want to go. What happened? A small brief, then you'll be able to understand. If you read from this book of 2 Samuel, 13th chapter to 18th chapter, one family fight, the fight between the father and the son is blown out of proportion. Slowly, it is not able to really get back to normal. The father and the son are not able to get back to evil. The son is being counseled by wrong people. There's a wrong person in the son, Absalom's life. Absalom was a dear son to David. David loved Absalom. Absalom was a very handsome boy, but he had wrong people in his life, and these wrong people are giving him wrong counsel. These people are telling, don't bother about your father. Your father is an old school boy. You're an old school man. You have to be rebellious. You have to be a young man. Enjoy everything. Demand this from your father. This is your right. This is your claim. You have to do this. You have to do this. From 13th chapter to the 18th chapter, you will not read about miracles. You will not read about great things. You will not read about God's glory. You will not read about anything that you want to read. You'll only be reading about the fight between the father and the son. About the father and the son getting trying to get to normal. The father is taking all the effort to love the son, to care for the son, to get back to the son, and the son to get back to the father. And you'll read about how this father, the son does not want to listen to the father. The son wants to take the father's property, father's concubines, father's money, father's position. The whole thing after six chapters, finally it comes to an end. And what is happening is David is eagerly waiting. David is waiting and a watchman who's standing at the watchtower, he comes and tells, sir, there's a man who's coming. I think he's coming towards us. Now David says, come, let's go. I think he will be bringing some good news because Absalom walked away from the house. Now David is praying. David is waiting for Absalom to reconcile and come back to his house. So David thought God answered his prayer and David is waiting. He moves from his palace. He goes, goes towards the gate. He stands at the entrance and he's waiting. Now the 
watchman says, sir, there is one more person I see coming. And this man looks like Ahima's son of Zadok. The word Zadok means a father, a person of integrity. The father's name is Zadok. So now the watchman is able to identify because this man, Ahima's, who's going to Joab for a favor, the watchman is able to understand, sir, this is Zadok's son. By the way that he's walking, by the way that he's running, his body language I'm able to identify. That's Ahima's son of Zadok. Zadok means a man of integrity. So immediately David says, is it Zadok's son? I am sure he will have a good news. Now David is thinking, he's evaluating the son with the father. He's thinking the son will also be a good boy like the father. He's thinking the son is exactly like his father. So he's waiting for the son. And this man, Ahimas, he overtook another person. Actually, somebody else started. This man goes to Job and he says, I also want to go and stand before the king. If I go before the king, I'll get a reward. He thought just by kneeling down, just by closing his eyes, just by praying like most of us do, he thought he will get an answer. So he wanted to overtake somebody and go and stand before the king. So Ahima somehow managed in his shrewdness, or maybe he had good food. He had, because he comes from a good family, he had energetic things in him. He overtook the other man and he came, comes to the king. Now David eagerly goes to Ahimas and asks Ahimas, he must tell me what is it you have to tell me he said sir I don't have any news for you this man David was very angry he said step aside look at it if you ask somebody get lost like the mother like the father like the boss who says get lost that means I'm so angry with you I would want to slap you I would want to just punch you on your face but I don't want to use my hand just get lost from here move away from here that is exactly what David says get lost or move away step aside so he must thought just by coming and standing before the king, just by coming and standing and asking and stand posing before the king, he will receive what he wanted. But the king scolded him and asked him to move aside. Then there was a Kushite who came. A Kushite is an Ethiopian. If you look at an Ethiopian even today, they have small curly hairs. They have lips that are swollen, that are big, bigger than most of us who would have seen an Indian. They're somebody who their noses are very small, very flat. They're not good looking people. They're not somebody whom you'd want to look at the second time. But this Kushite comes to David and David asks this Kushite, what is that you have to tell me? The Kushite informs David about the news that's from the from the from from wherever he's wherever he comes from. Friends, the third thing that I want to remind you and close is maybe most of us are very presentable. We wear branded clothes. We go for grooming centers. We have all the best of the perfumes. We have all that is making us look fresh, look nice, look appealing. Maybe we have the super stylist or the top stylist getting, getting, taking care of our hair. We have the best dietitian giving us food. We have the best of all of our good friends coming and telling, that's a great person. Why don't you go? Maybe you and I can be very presentable and we think we can go and stand before people and we can receive whatever it is there could be somebody dark not that black is an ugly color so there could be somebody who's ugly there could be somebody who does not have a good hair like you there could be somebody who does not have a pleasing personality like you there could be somebody who has disfigurement flat nose bulgy lips and all the crazy things that you would never want in a good looking person or a person to even sit and talk to or even sip a coffee with that man will go before the king. That man will go before the boss. That man will go before somebody. That man will start a business. That man will start a church. That man will go before somebody. And he will just like that clinch the deal. And he will receive a reward. So that's what Job says. Why do you want to run? Why do you want to go? You don't have a good news. You don't have anything to tell the king. Just because you're born to this father, just because you come from this family, just because your parents have given you a family name, just because your parents are providing you with a good college, with a good car, with a good bike, or with good uh, bank balance, it doesn't mean that you can impress the king. Similarly, the third thing is, ensure next week when you come here, you have a good news. We may not be the best of our people, we might have defects in our body. We might have defects in our qualification. We might have defects in our work atmosphere. We might have 100 things that are troubling us. But that's what Job, a senior servant, he was a pastor. Job looks at Ahimas and says, Ahimas, you don't have a good news. What can you go and tell the king? If you have something to tell the king, it's fine. But just like that, if you go before the king, you will only be sidelined. You might go stand before the king, but don't expect a reward from the king. Friends, the Bible tells us, the father looks at a 17-year-old David. He says, go do this, do this, do this, and come back with a report. 
come back with the report a courier guy takes a signature he asks for your name he asks for your number because he has to go and submit a young boy or a girl after coming from the examination hall the parents ask how did you do your exam for the same everybody will give the same answer i did it very well only when the paper comes you will know how well it is that's what everybody will say i did it very well the paper was easy oh all that i studied was in the paper similarly maybe today god is telling us next sunday when you come back come back with a report and what is that you need to do to come back with a good report is one don't slow your pace there'll be people against you there'll be fights in your house in your office in your church in your ministry even between people inside your home there could be somebody who's going to bite their teeth there's somebody who's going to raise their voice there's somebody who's going to slam their door leave it god knows how to deal with it but you don't slow your pace you will see a miracle that servant did not slow his pace he saw somebody dying right in front of his eyes coming back to his life maybe it doesn't happen these days but it happened and something similar can happen in your life and my life the second thing is the bible tells us a man obeyed god's voice he ran to the desert god is telling him go he goes to the desert he sees an ethiopian minister he sees him in a chariot he could have said sorry lord i think i i heard it wrong i have four daughters if i go very far then i cannot come back to my house after dark my daughters cannot stay alone he could have given a million reasons but after the ministry is over the bible says the spirit of the lord took him by a business class he was taken by angels he did not fly by etihad or he did not fly by uh, emirates he he was flying like an angel god took him and placed him in another place at the end of it he had four loving daughters who were prophets who were useful for god were useful for people when we obey god when we obey god maybe it was very difficult for me to accept ajay's call ajay is telling him that he we, he wants us to come he wants me to come trust me i avoided his call i i did not answer his call i told him i'll call back it is not because i was busy but my mind was not at all for it because this person who's dead and gone he never entered into canaan he never stepped into my church even once and what is the connection it is not the 1000 rupees or 5000 rupees that i need it is the connection it is the relationship that we need and it was very difficult for me to understand accept him he was texting me he was repeatedly calling me but i said i will call you back i will get back to you and after that you know why i accepted because god said i want you to go and stand with the brief family i i don't know if you ask me only on the photo i saw who's the person who's dead i've not seen his wife i've not seen his children maybe he could have stepped into canon but i don't know who this person is but i know if i obey god's voice if i go and stand where god wants me to stand i have three children they have to go a long way they not only have to stand they have to travel they have to run they have to walk they have to crawl they have to kneel they have to go through so much more in life they have not even started their life if i stand where god wants me to stand if i obey god's voice then my children will be taken care that's what i heard when i read this portion similarly this week obey god's voice never neglect god's voice and the third thing is always have a good news tell to tell god god i prayed and went i asked you to help me and you helped me when we do these things three things we will come back with the good news let's close our eyes let's pray this is a time when god wants you to come back with the good news few a few of us over here we've come back with no news at all even that no news could be good news because we did not have anything depressing we did not have a life loss we did not have anybody going astray no police case no drunken driving no accidents nothing to hurt as yesterday celebrity was caught drunk drive maybe i was reading this i felt very bad for this great person this she was a super celebrity but she was caught in the wrong act maybe similarly our children all of us over here they were not caught in the wrong act they were not caught by anybody they were not on the youtube or there was no news article running on them so there was nothing that went wrong there was no police case there was no court room visits there was no lawyers whom we had to pay and hire how much more great things that god has done us today even as you are ready the father entrusted david with some responsibility and the father tells him come back with a report the father in heaven has given you a job a position a role in the family in your church in your in your office in your in your institution somewhere you have a role next sunday when you come back will you have a good news will you have a report at least most of us don't have a report most of us don't have anything we come because it's a sunday we don't have anything to come and tell god last sunday when i came i was depressed i was troubled i was into trouble i was into problems 
or I was happy this week I'm happier or this week uh, you took away my problems we, we may not have many reports but let us remember remind ourselves next Sunday when I come I need to have something that's going to glorify God God we pray for all the three things that we heard let us not slow our pace let us not be disobedient to the voice and let us not come back without any good news let us always have something good God we pray for each and everyone seated over here as well as friends who would be watching this Lord we pray that you bless them Lord and we all of us will have something good something glad so that people around us would be blessed in Jesus precious name we pray Amen. if you're ready and if you're prepared we will have a time of communion uh, if you could rise if you people who are anointed people who are blessed people who have taken baptism we'll be happy to serve communion to you and we'll all have it together let's pray God we thank you for this blessed Sunday Lord we thank you for your God who always has the best for us but maybe we are the ones who walk away who drift away who move away from the great plan that you have God we pray that you'd be present in the breaking of the bread the Bible tells us that your body was broken so that by your stripes we are healed Lord we claim those promises we claim those verses there are people who are really expecting a healing in their mind in their body or maybe in their finances or maybe in the relationship that you've given them there could be somebody who says God give us the healing give us the healing there could be somebody who's praying we pray for that healing and the Bible tells us that your blood cleanses us from all our unrighteousness Lord maybe yes we've fallen and we've fallen again and again in the same way Lord we pray that you'd wash us one more time Lord we are weak we're going through so many challenges we pray that you'd wash us and you'd make us stronger so that the new week that we enter we would be stronger we would run faster we would come back with the greater news bless the elements Lord in Jesus name we pray Amen Jesus my
as we heard that we need to come back with the report. Lord, we pray as we've come here with hope that you would strengthen us, bless us, equip us, cleanse us. Lord, we pray that you'd do it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all have it together. There could be challenges that you can't share with anybody. There could be something that's scaring you, a small little symptom, or an ailment that you're struggling with, or an issue that you've been ignoring, or it could be a challenge that's really pushing you off the path that God wants you to run. But this morning we've heard that God wants us to run in the same pace, not to slow our pace. Don't be troubled, don't be boggled by anything that's coming your way. You are a strong person. This is despite all that you've gone through. If you've come this way or thus far, it means that you're a strong person. God has already equipped you and God wants you to run stronger. Lord, we pray that you'd be with each one of them. Even as we are ready to take on a brand new week, maybe a week filled with challenges, a week that's going to be strange or the week that's going to be, uh, that's not that, that's going to be really filled with a lot of things that we never expected. But we pray that you'd be with us, Lord. We know next week when we come back, we'll all come back with a great report. We'll come back with a testimony. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even as we are ready to receive your offerings, we're going to sing this beautiful song. I believe in a hope that's so secure.
Hallelujah. He still reigns in our hearts, in our lives. And we mention the names of all those who are celebrating their best days in the week to come. Few are our live viewers. Um, Brother Sam is celebrating. Brother Sam Kalyan is celebrating his birthday. And Sister Rosalind and Brother Gideon, they are celebrating their wedding day. And Brother Santosh has become a live viewer now. Sister Neveda Sasman, he is celebrating his birthday. And Brother Samuel Pettiti and Shainu, they are celebrating the wedding day. Can we just clap hands and give God the glory? They are very much here with us. So we wish them and greet them. And Sister Senchu and Brother Nagi, they are celebrating the wedding day. And Sister Nitya and Brother Dilip, they are celebrating the wedding day. And Brother Selva, our violinist, he is celebrating his birthday. Can we hear it for him? We heard him play, and he's glorifying God through his wonderful talent. So we bless him many, many more years. And we bless Sister Minnie, who's celebrating her birthday. Shall we just clap hands and give God the glory? Others we would mention during the Tamil service. Let's pray, God. We thank you for all these wonderful people. They're very close to us. They're even more closer to you, Lord. We pray that you bless them. And even as they're ready to get through a wonderful week ahead, and a great new year. Lord, we pray like the father of Gay David, when they come back next year this day, let them have a lot of good reports, Lord, glad reports about how this year has been wonderful for them. And the rest of us, Lord, we pray that the new week that we are stepping into, Lord, we heard and we are going in the words that you've spoken to us. Be with us, strengthen us, equip us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, turn his face toward you, and give you peace. And all those who receive say, Amen, and God bless you.